And after it is verified by nodes, uh, if there is no accident, uh, it will be included in the blockchain. And the block. So the block has the field the pre previous block hash and timestamp and the transactions. And the blockchain is actually the chain of blocks. And it is chained by the hashes. So uh, let's see this blockchain. Uh, the block A, block B, the block B's pre block hash is set to the block A's hash. It is chained. So, and it is append only. So if you want to make a new block, you must append to the existing blocks, blockchain. So that uh, assume there is a block C, you must set the uh, block previous block, block hash as the latest block, and it will append it to the existing, <coughs> existing blockchain. And the purpose of the chain of blocks is uh, it makes uh, attackers hard to tamper the blockchain because if you modify any fields, anything in the blockchain history, uh, you can find out that when you uh, do calculations, uh, when verifying the whole blockchain. And a, a transaction is, on, is confirmed only if it is recorded in the blockchain. And the order of transaction is determined because uh, inside one block, there is an order of uh, transactions because it is a list. And um, between the blocks, because you know the, the order of the transactions, oh, sorry, you know the order of the blocks, so you can determine all of the transactions order. And this blockchain is used to serve as the single history for all nodes. So uh, all, all of the nodes just believe in this single history. And there's something, uh, there's some question like, uh, how to extend the blockchain. Actually, everyone can extend the blockchain, but the, uh, the one with more power has the bigger chance to extend the blockchain. So it's the in intent incentive of doing this is money. It is so-called mining. So let's assume there are two uh, people here, two nodes, and one is bigger, one is smaller. So the chance of the uh, the chance to extend the blockchain is uh, is bigger for the one with more power. And let's define power. In Bitcoin and the current Ethereum, uh, we use proof of work, which is known as POW. And this is the one with more computing power has more power. And another famous one is POS. Um, this is, uh, the idea is the one with more stake has more power. The stake means um, how much money do you have in the blockchain? Yes. And let's talk about Ethereum. Uh, Ethereum, it has its own blockchain and it used uh, POW and we will change to the POS in the future. Um, maybe someone, must, maybe some people already heard of the, the, the keyword Casper. It is still in the testnet testing, yes. And another feature of Ethereum is it has a smart contract. So the right hand side is a code snippet, a snippet in Viper, so it is it is a basic contract that hosts, maintains the counter, and you, it has a method, allows user to call. Uh, you can increment the, increment the counter, and then you have a method to get the counter's value. And currently, we have a scaling issue. Um, so um, many people's. Uh, are concerned now because uh, the current transaction per second is slow. It's slow. Um, like Bitcoin has a TPS of seven and Ethereum is 15. And 
while the visa has ten, uh, thousands of TPS. So, um, and there are more and more applications appearing in Ethereum, like the tokens known as uh, known by everyone, ERC20, and CryptoKitties. It is a famous game, and uh, it it. it uh, there is one period that um, the, the transaction of the crypto kitties uh, stuck the whole Ethereum network, so make the payments hard in Ethereum at that time, and crypto zombie and other games. So we need a higher TPS. And what is the reason causing this? Uh, actually, one of the reason is every node handles all of the transactions. So if we want to deal with the problem, we must make uh, one node only deal with part of the transactions instead of all of them. So it is the idea of sharding. <coughs> About Ethereum sharding, the basic idea is uh, we just divide a big blockchain into multiple shards. So like Think of it as a really big, big blockchain, and
transaction processing cap capability of the main chain. And we have the shard count is big OC. And transaction processing capability of the shard chain is also big, big OC because it is a chain, right? So the total of the whole sharding system will be shard count times And I have a scenario of the collator, how it works. And The scheme I just mentioned is the new is the old spec instead of a new one. The new one is becomes becoming uh, more complicated, so I just introduced the old one. And the phase two is, uh, oh sorry, the phase one basically we re we don't care about the tr execution of transactions. And until Phase two, we add it back, which means we allow uh, transaction executed. And phase three is like client state protocol. And phase four, we will implement the cross shard transactions. This is um, actually a hard problem. And we're still figuring out how to do it. And the phase five, uh, the type coupling with mentioned security, because um, as, ju as I just Describe. Uh, we are we're doing something like we depends on the main chain. That that is loose coupling. So everything in the shard chain is determined by the main chain. So in this phase, we will change that. And the phase six, uh, we will achieve super quadratic sharding, and and that's my that's my um, talk. So the reference from Bitcoin white paper, Ethereum white paper, and the sharding phase one spec is in our forum. It's a post. So if you are interested, you can check it out. And then the sharding FAQ, it describes the problems we, we encountered and we're still discussing about. And the sharding repo, it contains the old code uh, in our sharding POC, and we will put our new contract there and the documents there. And the current Im implementation in PyEVM is this repository. Mm, that's it. Okay. So, uh, Kari, uh, you are working on which page now? Uh, phase one. Phase one. Yes. Then the last phase, phase six, your target completed year. Mm. Which year you complete target to complete the whole phase of six? Uh, sorry, I can you repeat that? Uh, mm -hmm. My question is, the whole phase is six phases, right? Yes. So your target 
uh, when is the target complete all the phases? Where is the time timeline? Timeline? timeline. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I think it is not clear for now. Yes, because still progressing. Something are still uh, under discussion. Yes. So how many people are working on this with you? Uh, you mean sharding? Uh, five, like five, five people, yes, currently. And mm, some of us are in Taiwan, and some of uh, one, uh, one researcher is in London, and like, and Vitalik will get, give us a lot of suggestion. Yes. Is it like an open development model, or are you? Mm. It is open source. Oh. This part, can you go back one slide? Okay. No, sorry, no, the one that had the URL on it. URL, okay. Yeah, so uh, look at you, the, second, the third URL, facing starting phase one spec. Uh, that, that, uh, you, that research board is where you can sort of see, see it low by low. And uh, if you want to see everyone working on it and talk to them, you can. Um, yeah, if you spam, you'll be. But, but, but you're encouraged to talk about. Yeah. There are actually a lot of posts discussing ho the whole spec and, and the problems. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Um, so so uh, inevitably, there's going to be like shards that will be executing transactions that will double conflict, right? Mm. Uh, uh, you mean cross shard or? Yeah, like shard so, A and shard B might have transactions that will, when they resolve into the main chain, might conflict. Yes? Might conflict? Uh, I, I don't think so. It, it should be separate states. So the execution within one shard does not affect it by another shard. Well, what if, what if, what if the execution in shard A empties all of Alice's account and execution charge B tries to take money out of Alice's account as well. Both of those can't, can't get merged. Mm, um, um, for, uh, for my understanding, uh, we separate the state for, uh, previously. So if we want to do some cross shard things, we will go back to main chain, and the consensus will be made in main chain. Right. So, so, so is, is, is it that the, the code that splits the shards in the first place guarantees there's no conflicts, uh, conflicting accounts ahead of time, or is that resolved when you try to reconcile in the, in the main block? Um, you can think that if you, um, in our early stage, uh, if you want to do some operation in shard, in some shard, you have to move your lock your money in in main chain, and therefore you can create some money in that shard. Yeah, so the operation will not be affected. Hmm. Any. How far are you into the phase one implementation? How far? Um, when would you finish? Mm, <laughs> it is a good question. Um, I because we just have a new spec. Sure. Yes. So many things still be still need modifying a lot. Yeah. Could you could. Can you describe the other things that are being done to improve the transaction speed? Oh, okay. Uh, so for sharding, it is a layer one solution, right? It is down. It is down inside the blockchain, and there are still other options like uh, layer two solutions. It is on top of the blockchain, and like there are state channel and there are plasma and there are like 
stational basically um, make the many of the transactions off offline. So many like micropayments transactions, they are not going to the blockchain. So it um, dramatically re reduced the uh, number of the transactions. Yes. And that helps with that one. So there, there's, a, there's a nice post on Medium. Uh, it's called Making Sense of Ethereum's Layer 2 Scaling Solution, State Channel Plasma and TrueBit. So if you just Google uh, Plasma Space TrueBit, you'll probably get it. And um, it's, it's pretty good. Thank you, for sure. <laughs> um, so I, I can see how this would uh, increase the, the volume of transactions that can get, get processed. Yes. But, the, but the, the introduction of like breaking out the shards and reconciling the shards, is that in, is that, uh, in practice, is that going to increase the latency? Like, it's going to make it take instead of 10 seconds, it's now going to be 15 seconds, but instead of 1,000, we can do 30,000 transactions? Is it going to increase the latency of the transactions? Latency of transactions? Mm, you mean within one shard? Or just, 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 you know, well, ultimately, ultimately, it counts, ultimately what counts is that it gets to the final blockchain, right? So the time from yes. introducing a transaction to it being on the final blockchain that everybody in the world can see it. Yes. Um, right now, it's approximately 10 seconds, right? Yes. With sharding, I see that's going to give you a larger volume of transactions that period of time. Yes. Will it also increase the latency that it's been like now taking 15, 20, 30 seconds before it shows up or is it still doing that within a 10 second time span? Ah, okay. So uh, if we you in, in the sharding phase one, uh, I just, uh, one collation, uh, one period has one collation. So, um, and the current period is five blocks in main chain. So there are five times the current uh, block time is about 15. So it's 75. So um, in, in, in these settings, the, the latency will, will, will increase. But uh, there are still some research about this, like reducing the number of blocks within a period. Maybe reducing it to one, and it, it will make the latency just like the, uh, the one in, in, in original Ethereum. Yes? So, 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 there's, there's, so in general, most people will increase latency. There are a couple tricks you can do to, to kind of bring it back down. Um, remain a little ambiguous, how much is it going to help? Uh, certainly, the switch to state will decrease our latency a bit. Um, but um, I mean, in short, there, there's a lot of trade offs for these things, uh, whether it be like block latency, uh, uh, you know, how many, how many transactions you can do, versus finality, uh, and uh, decentralization. And in general, uh, our, most of our roadmap is we're not trying to max out on, on, on any one of these. We're just trying to be kind of decent at all. Uh, obviously, if you have a system that wants, you know, say you want to real, say you want to play StarCraft on blockchain, uh, we will probably never be quite for you. Um, yeah, and we've just sort of made this as a design, as a, um, a design decision, but we're not. So we're, we're trying to do decent numbers of all of these things. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think that that increases latency is certainly not a deal breaker, right? I think people want the, the, what's necessary, the volume is a real hard one that we're hitting soon, and that should be addressed. But it's, <laughs> yes. Uh, any more question? Okay. How many shards do you think about ten hundred? Uh, currently in our our phase one spec, it is one hundred, currently, but uh, it should be larger. It it can be extended. Uh, yeah. Uh, you mean latency, or? Okay, just like you say, the the, the uh, 
the latency will increase. Yes. So, so this is so Oh no, it is not because of it is not due to the uh, shard count, number of shards. It is not because of that. It is because we set the period as five blocks in main chain. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. So, so for users of Ethereum, is, it, is, it gonna, is this just going to magically happen that you're using a sharded system versus touch the main block? Or like for phase one, it sounds like um, I'm inferring that wallets will choose whether to go into the shard system or whether to go yes. uh, uh. wait uh, on, on the main system. Mm. I don't um, know if your transactions are going on the shard or not shard, or is there, mm. is there a choice or is it just happening? Mm, I'm not so sure of it, actually. <laughs> yes, but. Mm. Like you have, you have yeah. sharding working now, like people can submit transactions and go through sharding and it ends up on the blockchain now, right? Yes. So, how did those transactions get on the sharding? They had to choose. Do a sharding contract? Uh, um, if a node wants to send transaction to a sub specific shard, it might it needs to listen to the network to that shard of that shard. So, so, the, so the node makes the decision. Not yes. The, the node the node makes the tra uh, the decision. Yeah. Yes. So you can actually choose which shard. Are, which you are interested in. Yes. Uh, when you say phase one doesn't implement the EVM, uh, does that mean it only implements ether transactions but no smart contracts? Yes. Um, in, in, in phase one, we just treat the transaction data as the data. So we don't actually ex execute them. Yes because we want to focus on the data availability problem. Yes. Any more questions? Okay, thank you.